to another episode of Fresh Tech. It's your boy Courtney Hill, Mr. Fresh himself, and today I bring to you my review of what I'm calling the LG G Nexus, as well as I'll be giving you my thoughts and opinion on the LG G Flex 2 that was just announced at CES. Stay tuned. Now, LG has been a company that has managed to scratch and claw its way back into the, the forefront of smartphones and technology as a whole, and they've been making good strides ever since, I believe, in my opinion, the Nexus 4, uh, and they've given us compelling devices such as the G2 and now the G3, and I've been meaning to give you guys this review of the G3 for a while, being that I've owned it since launch, and I wanted to give you something to spice it up a bit, something that wasn't your norm. Now to give you my review of the LG G3, I've actually owned this phone since launch day. I went ahead and pre-ordered it and I've owned it for like what the past 6-7 months now. Um, and in my opinion, it's actually one of the best looking phones of 2014. Although they didn't include any premium materials like metal or aluminum, uh, they actually went ahead and made it very handsome in my opinion. With the screen to bezel ratio, it's almost bezel-less. And then I wish more OEMs would definitely adopt the on-screen keys. Uh, in my opinion, that's the best way to go. I am not a huge fan of capacitive touch buttons at the bottom or the physical home button. It just seems too Apple-esque, and I think that the on-screen keys is definitely the way it should be. That's how most Nexus devices are, and that's how Android should be used, is with on-screen keys. And speaking of other keys on the phone, the physical keys on the phone, it's pretty nice and ergonomic in terms of the placement on the back. At first, I will admit, it is a bit awkward. But after using it a bit and getting used to it, it's probably the best way to have your buttons on your phone and it allows for a bit more of a handsome display on the front without having to worry about you know anything poking out on the sides. The back is definitely the way it should go in my opinion uh, after using the G3. They've really conformed me to that thought process. I like the back buttons on it. Um, but the only qualm I have about this phone is most definitely the battery life. Uh, the battery is only a 3000 milliamp battery which when you think of 3000 milliamps you think hey that's pretty big. Uh, but 3000 doesn't get you far when it comes to a quad-core uh, processor and a, a Ultra HD screen. Of course, the first rendition of any uh, quad-core screen or any new technology for that matter, uh, battery life is probably going to suffer and maybe there's going to be many pros and cons to adopting new technology. But battery life on this is definitely subpar. Um, with moderate usage, uh, when, I, when I didn't root it, with moderate usage, I would barely get through a day. But now that I've rooted it, the battery life is phenomenal. I have went ahead and stripped it of its LG user interface and made it more stock Android. And it does really well on battery life now. And if you haven't noticed, I've, I actually prefer stock Android over anything else. Uh, and I actually rooted this phone because they were pushing back the Nexus launch for Verizon so far out that I decided to make my own Nexus. And down to my recommendation, I would most definitely recommend this phone, whether in its current state, rooted or non-rooted in just the regular LG fashion. It's an overall great buy, you really can't go wrong with it, and right now it's at a ridiculously low price on most carriers. It's doing really well. But that really concludes my review of the LG G3. Let's get into something a bit more exciting, and that's the LG G Flex 2. Now the G Flex 2 uh, is actually sporting a much better processor than the G3. Um, it has overall a better specs out the gate. It's definitely built like a flagship device, and I, I really want to give a G Flex a try. I wasn't able to, of course, get the original G Flex, being that I'm not on T-Mobile, but I really want to give the G Flex a try because that curved display really does look pretty cool to me. Uh, and watching videos on my phone is probably going to be pretty cool with the curved display. It's probably going to be like those new Ultra HD TVs. I don't know. But this is probably one of the phones that I'm excited about the most so far. The Lollipop does look pretty nice on it with those different capacitive buttons at the bottom. And they shrunk it down a bit, making it a bit more ergonomic. And I think that's the sweet spot, really. Five, you know, five to five and a half inches is where it should be. And overall, I think this is going to be a huge contender in the market for 2015. And I'm excited for it. The self-healing back may be a bit gimmicky. I like the Tech 2-1 cases normally, so I'm not really going to be using that probably. But I think this is going to be a great phone holistically and I'm looking forward to using it. But that really concludes all my thoughts, guys. It's been a pleasure. Stay safe, stay fresh, and uh, go get some tech. Peace.